Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward with Rocketstock.com, and in this quick tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create this cool Ghost in the Shell inspired title sequence in After Effects. Let's hop in. So before we get going any further, I want to encourage you to go download the free project file and video assets used in this tutorial over at the blog at Rocketstock. You'll find a link in the description of this video. So in order to get started, I'm going to select all of my compositions here and my solids and drop them in the trash and hit delete. So let's create a new composition. So go to composition, new composition. It can be 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second, and it doesn't need to be that long. In fact, we're only gonna make ours five seconds long and hit OK. So the first thing we have to do here is create a new title. So I'm gonna go up here and select the title tool and I'm gonna type in rocket, all caps, and go ahead and select that text. And we're going to make it white. And for the character, I'm going to set the font to Lato, that's L-A-T-O. You'll find a link uh, to this font in the description. And we'll go ahead and scale it down to right about there, about like that. And then you can go ahead and turn up the kerning just a little bit to kind of space out the letters. Uh, go ahead and hit Command D or Control D on a PC to duplicate and hold down Shift to drag it to the right perfectly in a line here. So go ahead and select your second text and I'm gonna type in stock and put an exclamation point to try to keep it the same width. I know it's not exactly the same size, but it's pretty close. So uh, we want it to just be as close as possible to the ghost in the shell uh, text. And now that we've created this text, let's go ahead and duplicate this one more time. So hit Command-D or Control-D on a PC. And we're gonna type in I-N, hit Enter, and type in the. So let's go ahead and select this text and scale it down. It's right about there. And we're gonna move it right here to the middle. So now let's go ahead and create our triangle. So go over here and select your pen tool. And as long as you don't have any other layer selected, uh, the pen tool will actually create a new shape. So we actually don't want the shape to have any fill. So you can select this blue fill text here and just select the transparency button and hit OK. And then under stroke, we actually want it to be solid. So we'll make sure we have our solid color selected there and hit OK. And it's white and that's perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and just create a simple triangle and you can hold down shift at any time whenever you're using uh, the pen tool and it will create lines that are perfectly uh, left and right or perfectly up and down. And then we can just go ahead and close out our triangle at the top here. So uh, this is a little bit uh, too wide of a stroke for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and as long as we have the shape selected, we can turn down the stroke, just dial it into whatever we see fit. In fact, I'm gonna try to match the stroke of the text here. So we can just kind of scale it down and then center it up about like that. And then if you wanted to change up any of these points, so I think actually uh, this uh, top point here is not exactly centered, you can go to the drop down menu here, go to contents, shape, path, select the path, and now as long as you have your selection tool selected, you can make a little box around the top point and move it around. So I'm just holding down shift and gonna kind of center it up here, about like that. And then we can just go ahead and select it and move it over. Cool, about like that. So let's go ahead and select all of our layers here. And I'm gonna go to our proportional grid and we're gonna move it all down just to make sure that it is as centered as possible. And about like that. Cool, so that is looking good. So let's go ahead and rename this comp. So if you go ahead and select the comp up here and hit the enter key, uh, you'll be able to change up the name. And I'm gonna go ahead and change this to text and click away. And let's go ahead and drop this text composition into a new composition. So you just grab the composition up here and drop it in the new composition button. And when you do that, you'll have a new composition. It's called text2. We'll actually call this distortion. 
And what we're going to want to do is actually add in some distortion. So we want this uh, text to kind of bounce around the frame in the beginning and then come to rest at, we'll say, the 14 frame mark. So let's go ahead and select our text layer down here. Hit Command Shift D, and that will split the layer and create you know multiple layers here. And we'll go ahead and move over two frames. Hit Command Shift D again. Move over two frames. Command Shift D. Two frames, Command Shift D, two frames, Command Shift D. So now it's our job to go in and randomize the look of all of these individual text layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the very first one and we can hit S for scale, scale it up, move it over to maybe about right there. Let's go ahead and move over to the next one. We can hit S for scale, we can scale it up, move it to right about there. We can do the same thing for this next layer, scale it up, we can move it right here, next layer, scale it up, about right there. And then the last layer, we can maybe scale it up a lot. Maybe we just want it to be just this uh, white line across the frame here. And that's looking good. Now, you'll notice that if you kind of zoom in here, and I'm going to turn off my proportional grid, uh, there's kind of some fuzzy edges. That's because this layer is not continuously rasterizing. So go ahead and select all of your layers there and hit this little uh, star icon section. So you'll go ahead and select that, and you'll notice that you'll get some real nice uh, sharp edges there. So go ahead and drop the distortion layer into the new composition button, just like we did before. And in the new composition, instead of distortion 2, we'll call this final comp. So now let's go ahead and play back our footage so we can kind of see what's going on here. Excellent, so as you can see, there's some random animation and this looks pretty good. Now it's time to drop in our video assets. And before I drop them in, let me tell you that these assets are actually from a larger pack called Corruption over at Rocketstock. And if you're looking to add any glitch elements or distortion to your footage, there's no better pack than Corruption. You can check it out by following a link in the description of this video. So in order to create this look, I'm actually going to drop this sci-fi transition number three, and this is from Corruption again. I'm going to drop it into our timeline below our distortion text composition. So let's make sure this ends at the 20th frame. So if you zoom in here, you can see that there is some hyper detailed distortion going on, and this looks really cool, but I want to customize this even further. So let's go to our effects and presets browser and type in Tritone and drop it onto the sci-fi transition. Now we're gonna keep our shadows as black, but for our midtones, we actually wanna select, let's say a bright red, about like that. And for the highlights, let's select kind of a bright, kind of turquoisey green, about like that, and hit OK. And if you want these titles to look even more like the Ghost in the Shell titles, you can type in Fast Blur and drop it onto the distortion layer. And we'll go ahead and just turn up the Fast Blur to about 13 and select Repeat Edge Pixels. So if you kind of zoom in here, you can see the distortion is still there, but it's kind of blurry. And you can just go in and dial that in as you see fit. So about like that, yeah, that looks cool. So now let's add in some more distortion elements. So I'm gonna select transition number six, seven, and nine and drop it on top of the composition. Now we're gonna work with these individually one at a time. So I'm gonna select our transition number six up here and let's go up here to the effects and presets browser, type in tent and drop it onto transition number six. And I'm going to map white to kind of a brighter blue, about like that and hit okay. And now I'm going to uncheck the eyeball here and select the eyeball for the number two layer. And let's go up here to our effects and presets browser and type in tritone and drop the tritone onto the layer here. And for the midtones, let's select a bright blue as well. And for the highlights, let's select just a really bright neon kind of hot pink, about like that. Excellent. And let's go to our effects browser, type in fast blur. Drop the fast blur just like before, and we'll scale this up to about, uh, we'll say like five or six, and select repeat edge pixels. Now let's turn the eyeball off for that one and select our transition number nine. Go ahead and go to your effects and presets browser, type in tritone, drop the tritone right on top. We'll change the uh, midtones to, let's say a deeper red this time, about like that. And the highlights will change to 
Oh, maybe a little bit of a deeper blue as well, about like that. And let's go to the effects browser, type in fast blur, drop in the fast blur, and you guessed it, turn it up to about five or six. Make sure repeat edge pixels is selected. And now let's go ahead and select all three of our layers, move it over to where it lines up perfectly with our distortion layer underneath. And you'll notice that we are actually working with 4K video clips. So these clips are much bigger than HD. So go ahead and select all of your distortion layers in the timeline, your video clip layers, and you can go in and just scale it down to where it fits into the frame. Excellent. So now you're probably wondering why we can't see the text below. And that is because we need to change the transfer mode of these transitions. So I'm going to select all three of these transitions here and change the transfer mode to add. And when we do that, you can see the text underneath. But now we want our ghost in the shell text to actually be distorted by this video footage underneath. So go to your effects and presets browser and type in displacement map. And you can drop the displacement map onto the distortion layer here. That's that pre-composition that's right over here. So now go in and change the displacement map layer to transition number six. And we're gonna turn up the horizontal displacement to about 30 and we can keep the vertical displacement to five. So now if we scrub through, we can see uh, that this video footage is distorting the white areas in our image. And this is kind of just making it look like the glitch is actually happening to the text and not just to the glitch layers underneath. So if you scrub to the end here, you'll see that this text is not actually centered anymore. And that's really just because of the way the displacement map effect works. But we can go ahead and center this up by setting a simple keyframe. So go ahead and select your distortion layer, hit P for position, set a keyframe at the very last frame of the distortion, move ahead one frame, and we'll go ahead and center it up just like that and go ahead and turn off your proportional grid and let's preview our final look excellent so this is looking great but let's change one quick thing go ahead and zoom in here and move your keyframes for the position of the distortion layer over about five frames. So we want it to basically stop animating at the 12th frame. So if we play it back here, you can see that the text is static at the end. And that's exactly the look that we want to go for. I hope you found this tutorial inspiring. If you want to learn more about our exclusive pack of 120 4K distortion elements, go check out Corruption on Rocket Stock. This has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.